Have you ever looked at apps like Home AI making $800,000 a month and thought to yourself, I wish I could build something like that? Well, I just did exactly that without writing a single line of code using just one AI tool that cost me $25. And I just built a complete clone of the viral Home AI interior design app. I replicated all of their features. I connected it to Stripe to receive payments right away. And basically I created something that that looks identical to the original. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly the AI tool that I use, which in all honesty is the best AI coding tool available right now. I'll walk you through my step-by-step -step process and I'll also show you how anyone, regardless of technical skills, can build apps with serious revenue potential. All right, so what are we trying to build? And the idea started simple. What what if you could take a photo of any room in your house, for example, pick a style like boho or minimalist, and then instantly see it transformed by AI? No clunky tools, no Photoshop tricks, just a clean app that makes interior design feel easy and fun. That is the concept right now we're going to turn into reality. So we're building a fully functional mobile app that recreates the home AI experience completely from scratch and again, with without touching a single line of code. And to keep it all focused, we're gonna do everything inside Replit. No bubble, no glide, just one workspace, just one AI agent, and of course, a clear end goal. And we'll start with a new AI tool called Code Guide. I added a link in the description box below so you can go ahead and check that out. Later on in the video, I'm gonna be using Replit to build the entire app. And with my code Mikey, M-I-K-E-Y, you will get a 10% discount. All right, so let's begin. And by the way, I'm not going to be plugging in any custom APIs or AI services up front. Instead, I'm going to let Code Guide explore the best available tools for the job for us. Whatever works best for realistic room transformations from user uploaded photos. And all it needs is a clear prompt and it handles the rest for us. So let's also add a few UI and branding notes just to give the app the right vibe. Now we're going for a clean, modern interface with neutral colors, smooth, rounded cards, and a minimalist font like Inter or maybe Poppins. Think something between Apple-esque style design and what you would see in the current home AI app right now. Now, I don't have a logo yet, but we'll keep that flexible for the time being. And as far as features go, the list is tight. Users should be able to upload a photo of the room, pick from a default list of styles, modern minimalist, Scandinavian, boho even, and choose the room type, whether that's the living room, the kitchen, the bedroom, whatever, the bathroom. Once that's done, the AI will generate a redesigned version of our space, keeping the layout, but changing the vibe. So that means new furniture, colors, decorations, all in line with our selected style. We're also adding a before and after comparison using a slider that lets people swipe between their original photo and the AI generated one. It's simple, but super satisfying to actually use and see with your own eyes. Users will be able to save their designs to a personal gallery inside the app. And then also, of course, download high resolution versions to their device. All saved content will be tied to their account. So nothing gets lost between sessions or devices. And speaking of accounts, we're keeping sign in really simple for now, just an email and a password. So no Google or Apple logins. And that just keeps things lightweight and easier to manage early on. We're also building in a way to monetize from day one, from the get go. So our users can try the app for free with a limited number of renders. And if they want more, they can subscribe to a premium plan using Stripe, either monthly or yearly. Premium unlocks unlimited renders, access to all of the styles, and of course, high resolution downloads. Lastly, we're making sure sure the app meets some baseline expectations. So it should feel fast on mobile. It should handle uploads very quickly and also follow proper data privacy standards like GDPR. Code Guide knows how to optimize for performance and secure storage behind the scenes. So we don't have to micromanage that part of the project. And then it generates an optimized prompt for lovable.ai. And then I'm going to take that prompt. I'm going to 
drop it into Replit, and that's where the actual build begins. So let's go ahead and see how far we can take it. Step one, starting with Replit. After dropping the optimized prompt into lovable.ai, Replit gets right to work. And within minutes, as you can see, things start to take shape. And I'm not just talking about a blank screen with a basic button here or there. No, this thing already feels like a real app. And in about 10 minutes, we've got a basic MVP, a working interface with a photo upload button and a drop down to select room types. Of course, it's not finished yet, but it is functional and honestly, way more complete than I expected to get right out of the gate. Now, what's super cool is that most of the core features from the initial instructions, those are already built in. It's like the AI read the blueprint and just ran with it. Now, it's all about tightening things up, dialing in on the finer details and making sure the experience actually holds up when someone starts using the app for real. Step two, fixing upload issues. Now that we've got the MVP running, it's time to actually test it out. And Repla gives us a working version of the app right away. So our next move is to try uploading a room photo and then see what happens. And of course, right out of the gate, we hit our first issue, but that's okay because the upload button is there. The UI looks fine, but the photo doesn't go through. Nothing happens. So again, it's okay. We'll just go straight to the AI and then tell it exactly what's going on. I am unable to upload a photo and Replit jumps into troubleshooting. Most of the time, one prompt is all it takes. It rewires the file input logic, updates how the image gets processed through the back end, and then reloads the app with the fix baked in. Sometimes it might need a second try or a bit of clarification, but usually it gets the job done really fast, faster than I could ever do by myself. And once the fix goes live, we can refresh it and test again. And this time, as you can see, the upload works just like it should. Now we're back on track. Step three, getting the AI to work. Now that the uploads working, the next thing we're expecting is a redesign. But after testing it out, nothing changes. As you can see, the photo goes through, but it doesn't really get processed. There's no new design, no transformation, just the same image coming back untouched to us. Well, what's the point, right? So I'm going to send to Replit a new prompt. The app did not redesign the room I uploaded. It needs to be able to actually redesign the room. And right away, Replit responds and asks for an open AI API key. And I already have one saved in my account secrets from previous projects before. Maybe you've seen them. So let's go ahead and plug it in. But if you don't have one on hand, no worries. All you have to do is just tell Replit to try using another AI service that doesn't need open AI. It'll usually offer alternatives automatically. And once the API is in for us, the results show up fast. Now the app actually takes the uploaded room photo and runs it through the AI. And within just a few seconds, we now have a redesigned image and it looks like Legit. The style changes, the vibe shifts, and the new version is ready to download right from the app. At this point, it's a pretty satisfying moment, like being able to see your own room get redesigned by AI for the first time feels kind of cool, like the concept just clicked into reality. There are still a few things to clean up in the app, but the heavy lifting here is already done and mostly done for us. Step four, improving the landing page. You know that moment when the app works like a technical does what it's supposed to, but then it still kind of looks like something built it in like five minutes. <laughs> That's where we're at right now. The redesign feature is working fine. Uploads are working too, but the landing page, it's giving off some basic energy. So let's go back to Replit and then drop in this new prompt. We need to have a proper landing page that looks good and displays all the features of the app. And as you can see here, that Replit updates its own documentation and gives us a quick rundown of the changes, then it starts rebuilding the layout from there. And the result is instantly better. The landing page has a new facelift with sections that actually explain what the app does. Icons pop in and our headings show off core features like AI room design, room selection, the before and after sliders. Those are all laid out clearly. Now, the first version was flat and forgettable. This one, it finally feels like something you'd actually see on an app listing, clean fonts, soft gray rounded UI cards, and a layout that adjusts smoothly whether you're on desktop or a mobile phone. Now, one thing to note, sometimes when you keep prompting for new features, the app breaks in kind of weird ways. It might glitch or forget something that used to work. But when that happens, it helps to just point it out clearly to the AI or even upload a screenshot. Replit usually fixes it fast once it knows what's going wrong. Step five, user authentication optimization. Logging in is one of those features you just kind of accept to just work and 
until it doesn't. And you can see here that I'm trying to sign in using the same email and password I registered with earlier, but nothing's happening. There's no error message. There's no feedback. It's just kind of stuck and hanging. And if this app is going to save user designs across devices, the login system has to be reliable. So I'm going to tell Replit simply what's going on. I can't log in with credentials that I already input from before. Then again, just to be clear, I mean, I can't log in with credentials that I registered with before. After a few rounds of back and forth, Replit will get it right. And the authentication feature finally starts behaving like it should. Now we're using the built-in auth system to set up account creation. So no Google or Apple logins here, just simple email and password, exactly how we planned it. Now, every user's save designs are tied directly to their account. And that means if someone switches to another device or opens the app on a new browser, their redesign history will follow them. Now the sign in flow is quick, it's consistent and finally working the way it's supposed to be. Step six, freemium model and Stripe integration. Now at some point during the build, the app stopped feeling like just an experiment. Now the core features are there and everything looks and feels strongly legit. But something is still kind of missing. There's no real reason for someone to pay for it. And if people don't pay, it's still a pretty cool side project, but nothing more. But that's where Stripe comes in. I wanted the upgrade path to feel natural. So when you try out a few renders, the app proves itself. And then when you hit the limit, it gently nudges you toward the premium plan. No pressure, no pop-ups, just a clear upgrade button that makes sense. Now, the only problem, it doesn't work, at least not at first. Subscribing doesn't activate anything. The flow is kind of broken halfway through and it doesn't update the user status. So I simply flagged it with Replit and then just told it straight up that the premium subscription was broken and that Stripe wasn't syncing correctly. Now it might take a few tries, but eventually the connection between payment and access will click into place as you can see here. Now premium users get everything unlocked. They get unlimited renders. They get every style. There are no restrictions. There's even a little badge in the UI that shows that you're supporting the app. Pretty good stuff. And just like that, this thing isn't just functional, it's monetizable. Now with Stripe working, I went through the full flow one last time. I signed up with a fresh account. I uploaded a bedroom photo. I chose a style and then I downloaded the redesign. I switched to a kitchen, then a living room. Then I also tried it on my mobile phone. There are no crashes. There's no weird behavior. Everything just holds up right. Our design saved to the accounts. Our downloads worked and the premium features, those unlocked instantly after subscribing. Bugs that popped up along the way, like broken buttons or silent API failures, those were all fixed just by prompting Replit all over again. I basically started testing like a real user would in the real world, logging out, logging back in, refreshing halfway even through a render, switching devices, using low quality images and maybe some weird angles, trying to just break things on purpose. And every time something didn't behave right, I just gave Replit a little bit of a nudge and it patched things up all by itself pretty quickly. Let's also check the little things, the split slider for before and after comparisons, the responsiveness on mobile phones, the layout across different screen sizes, Stripe subscriptions hold up across all of the sessions as well, and save designs reload no matter where I signed in from. Now what I was looking for was consistency. And now after dozens of tests run across different rooms, styles, and devices, everything just works. And that's it. Our home AI application is officially up and running. Every feature we mapped out at the beginning is now live. So from uploading room photos to generating full AI redesigns, choosing room types, switching between styles, sliding through before and after views, saving all of those results, even subscribing for unlimited access, it's all here. Now, what makes this even more wild is how we got here. No code, no dev team. Just smart prompts, a clear goal, and a bit of back and forth with Replit. Anytime something didn't work or felt off, all I had to do was just point it out in plain English and the AI adjusted. That was the entire workflow. Now, if you've got an app in mind or you just want to try building something for the first time, start with this process. All you got to do next is drop your questions or ideas in the comments section below. I'll always be checking. And if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and to share and subscribe for more builds just like this, it really does help me out. I appreciate you, thank you, and I'll see you at the next one.